everyone. Welcome to episode six of Sketch Support. This month I have a new free two-page sketch that you can download at scrapbookgeneration.com. You can find the link for it down below in the video description. And don't forget to go ahead and subscribe while you're looking for that link. I've used this sketch to create five different layouts with completely different looks. The point of sketch support is to show how you can easily adapt any sketch to fit your needs. There's a lot you can do to make any sketch work for you. And a lot of times it's little adaptations here and there that can make a big difference. I've also added a new feature to sketch support. I usually create five layouts, each based on the same sketch, but that doesn't even begin to show you all of the different ways you can adapt this one sketch. There are endless possibilities. So to show you some of those possibilities, I've created a three page PDF that has 20 more sketch examples, all based on this one sketch. It's a great resource for seeing how you can customize the sketch. It's really nice for those of us that need more of a visual to see how things really work. There are sketch examples that show how to change up the papers, use more photos, use less photos, use only four by six inch photos, how to create one page layouts, and then adapting the sketch to fit an eight and a half by 11 inch layout as well. It's three pages, 20 sketches for only $2. And that's a pretty awesome deal for that many sketch examples. I'll link to it down below in the video description. I'm also going to continue to do the sketch support challenge and $20 giveaway. The details for that are below in the video description and at the end of this video too. Last month, the layouts were phenomenal. I am so impressed with the creative ideas and different variations of the sketch that you guys shared. Hands down, one of the best months of layouts so far. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. So I've spent way more time than usual talking, so let's jump right into it with a look at the sketch that I have used as the starting point for each layout in this video. If you follow my videos and sketch support series, this sketch probably looks very tame compared to the sketch from last month. I loved last month's sketch and I had so much fun creating the layouts. However, that sketch and my layouts had a ton of detail. Of course, I love creating and to me an important part of scrapbooking is just as much about the creating as it is about documenting and preserving the memories. Scrapbooking makes me so happy and part of that is reliving those moments in our lives, but a huge part of it that makes me happy is creating something. However, the sketches and layouts from last month might not be the most practical. They definitely took more time than usual to create. I, I typically spend a, about three to five hours on a layout and I would say that all of those layouts were tipping the five hour end and maybe even more on some. I'm completely okay with spending that amount of time on a layout, but I know that a lot of people don't want to spend that amount of time, and I completely understand that. So I wanted the sketch for this month to be a little more practical. It's a little more toned down, a little more simple, yet there is still room for you to add in more detail if you want. Instantly, what I like most about this sketch is the photos. I like that there is a mix of vertical photos with a horizontal photo, and then there is a mix in the sizes as well. I also like that both sides feature a grouping of photos that are easy to adapt because they are not hinged to the design of the papers. What I mean by that is that on the left page, there are two four by six inch photos side by side that can easily be adapted to different sizes without having to make major alterations to the papers behind them. Same for the right side. Actually, on the right side, you have lots more room for creating your own photo arrangement that will fit whatever size or amount of photos you have. For the papers, there is this large background piece accented with some vertical banner strips. Again, because the, the photos aren't really hinged to the papers, there's a lot you can do with them as well to customize them to fit whatever you want. Now that we've taken a closer look at the sketch, let's get into the layouts. 
right off the bat, you can see how well these photos fit with this sketch. And would you believe me if I told you that it was total luck and these photos were printed months ago. I say it every month, and every month I think there's a few that are surprised to find out that I am using photos that I have already printed. These these photos are not printed to fit the sketch. I select photos and then make the sketch fit them. And I just got really lucky with these photos. Typically when I print photos, I will do a bulk print. So I will set aside like a whole day and just select photos, edit them, and then set up my print order. I feel like I'm pretty comfortable in my scrapbooking style and I've been scrapbooking long enough to know what types of photos I like to work with. I will pull up a set of photos, figure out which ones I feel are worthy of putting on the layout and narrow them down to an appropriate number and then figure out sizes based on the style of the photos and the amount of photos that I have. I don't usually have a design in mind right away as I'm editing the photos. I just know what sizes I like to use with certain types of photos. If I have lots of photos, I know I'm going to be creating a two-page layout. I have certain sizes that I like to use with two-page layouts. If I only have a few photos or just one photo, I know I'm going to create a one-page layout. And then I have certain sizes that I like to use with that type of layout. So I challenge myself each month with these sketches to work with photos that I've already printed to prove to you all that you really can make almost any set of photos work with any sketch. Sometimes when I get a particular idea that's like very specific and I don't have the photos on hand, I might have the photos specially printed, but that's not the norm. I think one of these days I'll do a sketch support behind the scenes video so you can see how I select the photos and then create the layouts. For me it's an it's an enjoyable process and I think it would be a lot of fun to share that with you guys. Because I had photos that perfectly matched this sketch, I didn't really make a lot of changes. These are common photo sizes that I print. 4x6 and 3x4 inch photos are one of my go-to sizes that I print and use often. I did change up the vertical strips just a little bit. I used a striped strip for the one inch strip instead of using it for the quarter inch strip. To go along with the theme of my layout and the title, I used a punch to punch out small hearts and then arranged them in a column where that small stripe strip was supposed to be. Sometimes it's fun to sneak in some shapes in place of strips that you see on a sketch. You can do this with vertical strips or horizontal strips with practically any size of strip depending on what size of punches you have or if you have a die cutting machine. This works with lots of different shapes too. I used hearts but you could use stars, circles, hexagons, arrows, butterflies, flowers. Seriously I could go on and on. The only limit is your imagination. To support the theme and my photos, I used my silhouette to create these little umbrella embellishments. I looked to the umbrella in the photos and tried to find pattern papers that matched those same colors so that the little umbrella embellishments coordinated with the umbrella in the photos. Each umbrella has a base layer of cardstock. I used a tiny gray and white striped layer next that would show as the handle. Then the different colors of the umbrella pieces were added along with a little yellow handle at the bottom. To add some texture and extra detail, I added a stitched line between the umbrella pieces and then added some yellow glitter to the handle and a small silver Nouveau drop on the tip top of the umbrella. To finish my embellishments, I added small punched hearts some wooden hearts, and then some word stickers.
with this layout, I've used a six photo sketch and created a 12 photo layout. That is double what the sketch has and the layout still very closely resembles the sketch. For the photos on this layout, I had most of them printed in three by four inch and four by three inch. I had a ton of photos that I wanted to include and I knew that going with a smaller print size for most of the photos was going to be necessary if I wanted to fit them all on one layout. Three of the photos I had printed were four by three inch. So I used two of them in place of one four by six inch photo on the left page. That's one of the easiest photo substitutions you can make when you need to include more photos on a layout. Taking a large photo on a sketch and splitting it into two smaller photos is always a go-to for me when I need more photos on my layout. For the right page, I used a series of action photos of my son Jackson squeezing and bursting a water balloon. I could have used the three by four inch photos as they were, but they would have gone all the way to the edge of the layout. And I wanted to have that space on the right edge between the photo and the edge of the layout like you see on the sketch. Typically, I try to keep equal margins, so I wanted to match the margin on the left page over here on the right page. So to still have that margin, I decided to trim the photos down just a little bit. So I cropped them down to two and a half by three and a half, which is another favorite photo size that I like to use. Then I added a small white mat and arranged them tilted and overlapped. This gave me that space I was looking for between the edge of the photo and edge of the layout. These photos are arranged in the same general area as the photos on the sketch, so I didn't have to make any major adjustments for them to fit. I did have to reduce the size of my journaling strips, but that's a very minor adjustment. After I had most of the photos on the layout, I still had two photos left over. One was a three by four inch and the other was a four by three inch. I really wanted to include them. So I was looking for a little solution. I knew I wasn't going to use them on the right page because they don't really tie into this action series that I was trying to build. So I knew that I was going to need to make them work on the left page somewhere. I finally decided to crop them down to two by two inch and add them near the biggest embellishment overlapped onto that four by six inch photo. I also added a small little mat to each one so that they would stand out since they are overlapped on another photo. I also liked how that mat helped tie them in with the photos over here too. And I gotta say, I love using two by two inch photos. I love that they are easy to add to almost any design. You can almost always find a spot or two to add some extra two by two inch photos. Plus I really like the extra detail that they can add to a design. When it came to the vertical strips design, I changed that up just a little bit. The paper collection I used had some papers that had a chevron style of design on them. And whenever I see papers like that, I like to cut them into strips according to the lines on the papers and then cut the chevron detail so that I end up with what I call an arrow strip. There is a point at one end of the strip and then a notch cut at the other end. And everything is cut along the design of the paper, so it's super easy. I cut out several of these arrow strips and layered them together to create one large design. I still covered close to the same area as the vertical strips on the sketch, so no other changes were needed. Anytime you see a large strip on a sketch, you can always substitute several smaller strips for a completely different look. It's also a great way to sneak in some more patterns or colors if you need to. 
To match the theme of my layout, I created these splash designs to use in place of the stars on the sketch. I used some chipboard splashes as a template to trace and then cut out these splash pieces. I didn't want to use the chipboard pieces themselves because they are really heavy and I've used others before and they just never seem to want to stay put on my layout. So I thought creating the paper versions of the designs would be easier. I added a hand stitched border to each one of all of the splash pieces. If I'm working with a die cut or single layer shape, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to add a stitch border to it. I really, really like the texture that it adds to just a flat piece like that. Then to further embellish the splash design, I used some glitter brads and some Nouveau Jewel Drops to create some little splash droplets here and there. If you thought taking a six photo sketch and doubling the photos for a 12 photo layout was a big leap, this layout takes it even further with 14 photos and it still very closely resembles the sketch. At the beginning of this video, I talked about liking this sketch because the photos aren't hinged to the design. So you can really do a lot here. And the last two layouts have been a good example of that. When I had this set of photos printed, I had the majority of them printed in two and a half by three and a half inches because I had so many that I knew I would want to include on one layout. To use them with this sketch, I ended up cropping most of them down to two and a half by two and a half inch square photos so that I could create this large block of photos on the right page. I love the look of square photos arranged in a big block like this. The two and a half inch size allowed me to have 10 photos on the right page without taking up much more space than the original photos on the sketch. Anytime you see a grouping of photos on a sketch, you can always mix and match your own photo sizes to fit. I always look at the measurements of all the photos in the grouping as a whole and then figure out how I can make that work with the photo sizes or amount of photos that I want to use. As long as you stay somewhat close to the original measurements of the photo grouping, you shouldn't have to make any kind of major adjustment to make it work. The group of photos on the right side of the sketch are around nine by eight inches as a group. The photos I used created a 10 by seven and a half inch group, and that's only an extra inch to the width of the whole group which there's plenty of room on the layout for that. And then the height is slightly smaller than what you see on the sketch. So no adjustments to any part of the layout design is needed to accommodate that change. I did change the format of my journaling. The sketch uses strips, which are always my favorite go-to journaling format. However, I like the arrangement of the photos and thought that a journaling block would fit really well within that design. And the same goes for the sketch as it is. You could easily use a journaling block and it will look great with the whole sketch design. I had two of the two and a half by three and a half inch photos that I didn't want to crop down. Neither one of them could be cropped down without losing important parts of the photos. I couldn't cut this poor giraffe or this whole line of students down. So my solution was to add them to the left bottom corner of the four by six inch photo where there is a larger embellishment on the sketch. And then I reduced the size of my embellishments and placed them above and below those photos. 
for the background pieces of the layout, I made a little change. I created kind of a mashup of the vertical strips and the large background piece. I used six two by 11 inch strips to take the place of the 12 by 10 inch background piece. The strips cover the same amount of space as the background and vertical strips. It's just a completely different look. To add some extra detail to those strips, I cut them into arrow strips with a point at one end and a notch at the other. Then I added some smaller strips with an arrow pattern on them and then some hand stitching um, in lines for added texture and dimension. Anytime you see a large background piece, I recommend trying to replace it with a design of the same size, but made up in strips. It's just a fun way to change up the look without changing up the measurements of everything as a whole. At first glance, you might not believe that this layout came from the sketch. And that's kind of the fun thing about sketches though. I never see a sketch as a rule that has to be followed. I see them as a starting point to build on with your own creative ideas. One of the best things about sketches is that they can work for anyone, for every set of photos, for everything. You can follow them exactly down to every teeny tiny detail and measurement of the papers, or you can take an element or two that you like and put your own spin on it. The layout can match the sketch or it can look completely different. It's up to you how you use the sketch and how you adapt it to fit what you need. With this layout, I took a few pieces from the sketch and then let my photos and the products I used kind of drive the rest of the design. As you can see, I was working with four six by four inch photos, which is very different from the photos you see on the sketch. These photos are all horizontal photos and the majority of the photos on the sketch are vertical. Two of the photos fit in easily with the design on the right page. There is a six by four inch photo on the sketch and then I could use another six by four inch photo right above it in place of the two three by four inch photos. And then I eliminated the remaining three by four inch photo. The other two six by four inch photos that I had were used in place of the two four by six inch photos on the left page. A lot of times you can swap out two four by six inch photos that are side by side with two six by four inch photos that are above and below each other without having to make huge adjustments. The height and width of both combined aren't too terribly far away from each other. It may not always work, but it does work a lot. When it came to the background piece, I changed it up because of the papers I decided to use. Every once in a while, I like to create a layout for sketch support using only six by six inch papers. I love six by six inch paper pads and use them often. So I always like showing how you can do that with these sketches. Plus this six by six inch paper pad matched my photos so well that I could not resist using it. Since I was working with a smaller size of paper, I had to figure out how I wanted to create a large background made up of multiple smaller pieces. I decided to keep the 10 inch height of the background. Then because I was using different photos in a different way, I decided to stretch that background a little further across the right page. I figured since I was using six by six inch papers, I would keep that six inch width with each piece and create a background that covered the same amount of layout on each side of the layout. Each block for my background is six by five inches, which totals an 18 by 10 inch background. 
Now I had this kind of mirror image design going on between the background and the photos. So this affected how I used the vertical strips on the sketch. Having that mirror image look produced a little shift in how to balance everything on the layout, or at least that's the way I saw it. I'm sure you could still have balance using the vertical strips as they are on the sketch, but I just wasn't feeling it. I wanted to continue this mirror image look look that I have going on. So I decided to create these small horizontal banner strips and adhere them on the edges of the photos. Since I had this whole mirror image thing going on, I added them on both sides of the layout. I used a small paw print punch to punch out a little paw print and then I added a paper to the back side of each one so that that paw print would stand out. Then to supplement my theme, I also used punched hearts for my embellishments and arranged them along the edges of the photos and the horizontal banner strips. With the two photos having more height than the four by six inch photos on the sketch, it didn't leave me a lot of room for a title. And the mirror image look also had an influence in where I wanted to put my title. I felt like it best fit on the left page, overlapped onto the photos, these banner strips, and this large heart. I kept my journaling in basically the same spot as it is on the sketch, so the title ended up being that mirrored placement of the journaling strips. It's always a sketch support tradition with the last layout to show that the size of the sketch doesn't have to determine the size of your layout. Two page sketches can be easily adapted to create a one page layout. You can always, and I mean always, make a two page sketch work for a one page layout or vice versa. The easiest with two page sketches is to simply split the layout into two and use one side for a one page layout. And that's exactly what I did here. I had these two photos of Drew at the beach that fit perfectly with the left side of the sketch. So I opted to use that as the starting point for my layout design. For my photos, I used two three by five inch photos in place of the two four by six inch photos. Three by five inch photos are one of my absolute favorite photo sizes and I use them often when I have just two photos. They're like the Goldilocks of photos for me. Not too big, not too small. They are just the right size to see the photo and to still have lots of room for fun designs on your layout. I also love that they can usually be cropped down from a four by six print if needed. I added a small photo mat to each one and then arranged them so that they are tilted and slightly overlapped. I do this often when I have two photos. I don't have a grand explanation for it other than I just like the way it looks. It worked well for this layout because I wanted to have as much of this background showing as I could. For the background piece, I chose to work with a square background and then I centered it on the layout. The biggest change is how I created the background. One of the things I love about these two photos is that they capture the beautiful range of colors and the water. And I wanted to try to replicate those different colors in my background piece. I wanted the colors to go from the colors of the sand all the way to the darker deep water you see in the picture. And obviously horizontal strips were going to be the best way to achieve that with these papers. I ended up using 18 different papers cut into half inch strips to create this nine by nine inch square for my background. 
it may seem like it would take a really long time to match all of these papers with the photos but honestly it took me maybe 15 minutes and I had a wide range of colors collected and ready to go to add some extra texture and dimension to the background, first I use coordinating colors of embroidery floss to add a hand stitch line on a few of the strips. When I'm picking out the colors of embroidery floss, I'm not worried about getting a perfect match of colors. I generally will shoot for a shade or two lighter or darker to help it stand out while also being a subtle detail. For even more detail, I cut some small waves with my silhouette out of the same papers that I used for the strips and then layered them on top. I decided to remove the vertical strips because to me, they just, they just didn't go with this scene style of background that I had created. There was nothing that would tie to this scene that would be going up and down on the layout. So instead, I added a set of word stickers in a way that kind of leads up and down the layout. To me, that kind of replaced those vertical strips by having these small elements in that same concept without covering up so much of the layout. I know that's kind of a weird explanation and reasoning, but to me, it serves a similar purpose as those vertical strips do. The last thing I changed was moving the title and adding the journaling. I moved the title to the bottom of the photos instead of the top like you see on the sketch. I wanted to create a white wave style of embellishment to go with the white and the waves in the photos. I also thought it would be a great way to highlight my title. However, having it at the top of the photos just didn't work with this scene I have going on in the design. I felt like it was a much better fit below the photos. Because I used the left page of the sketch and the journaling is on the right page of the sketch, I had to find a home for my journaling. With moving the title, that opened up the perfect spot for a few journaling strips above the photos. That brings us to the end of Sketch Support Episode 6. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to continue to see these Sketch Support videos. Uh, stay tuned for the Sketch Support Challenge details. Okay, the Sketch Support Challenge is to use the free sketch I have used in this video as inspiration to create your own layout. There will be a Sketch Support Challenge post on my Facebook page that will be pinned at the top of the page, and I'll link to that below so that you can find it. After you create your layout, you will go to that post and in the comments post a picture of your layout. I will randomly select one person to receive $20 in downloadable sketches. I'll let you choose which sketches you want. That way you can mix and match and pick out whatever ones you want to use in case you already have some. You can also pick out classes or ebooks. I'll leave that option completely up to you. You'll have a month to complete a layout and post it on the Sketch Support Challenge post on Facebook. Then on August 31st, I'll announce the winner. So go grab the free sketch from scrapbookgeneration.com and get to creating. I look forward to seeing what you guys do with this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.